Hey there game gurus, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing another II Arcade video uh, that involves the GRS Ultimate Control Panel for the II Arcade and the now soon to be released Viper Switcher Board for the II Arcade. Today's video I'm going to go about installing this in the Legacy Cabinet, the original cabinet released from II Arcade. Now this will work both in the Gold and the Legacy, but today's video is going to be about the Legacy unit. You can all see up here I have the light up marquee here from uh, Al Link. I'll be doing a video on this uh, later on down the road. Um, it does support, or should support I should say, the uh, GRS Viper. So you know, as you pick your games, you'll be able to see the different games coming across that as well. But without any further ado, let's get into how we install the Viper Switcher Board right here inside the legacy cabinet. I know it looks like it might be complicated, it's not. There are some steps that obviously involved because you are tapping into the original computer that's in here and allowing it to switch between the Viper and it. That'll be the same with the gold. So there is some things you're gonna do. It's obviously gonna void your warranty, but you know what? I don't think it's a problem anymore. So let's get started. Okay, so we have here uh, the GRS Ultimate Control Panel and obviously the IRK is currently powered on. The first thing we want to make sure is we turn it off, make sure it's completely powered off, and also disconnect all AC power from the back just to make sure that there's no current power going to any one of the boards and risk any electrical shock. You should also touch something metal before you touch anything just to make sure you have no static electricity buildup, especially in the winter months. It's a little drier and you don't want to take a chance of shorting anything out. So once you're sure the machine is powered off and everything's unplugged, first thing we're going to do is remove the GRS Ultimate Control Panel. And that's easy enough, just two screws, uh, one on each side. Let's we'll unscrew those. Very easy to do. And then we'll lift the GRS Ultimate Control Panel up and away. Now you do have to be careful if it was installed, you wanna take out your plexiglass or your glass uh, screen protector, obviously. When you're removing this, just be careful because there is a USB uh, A cable and a power cable going to your GRS Ultimate Control Panel. Just pull those off and then you should be able to lift your machine uh, control panel right out. Then all we need to do next is simply remove the GPIO, which is the, uh, the connectors that go for all the controllers on your IRK panel. Now you can see my II uh, Arcade uh, motherboard has already been removed from the back box. Obviously this will depend more on your system. Uh, I had already screwed it back down here uh, but I'm going to unscrew that here. If it's still in your original uh, case, you will have to remove your IRcade uh, CPU from the original case. Just take care when taking it out. Uh, it's simply just unscrewing the, uh, the case and unscrewing the back plate and the board should slide out easy enough. But again, the key thing here is make sure you touch something metal before you touch this or you have a static wrist guard. Just to make sure you have no static electricity, that's you know the worst enemy with anything that's electronic, is uh, zapping the chips and causing a problem. Uh, you know, these boards are hard to come by. Uh, right now, American Gear Company does have some. So if you are looking for a board, if your board is broken, you can reach out to American Gear Company. I think they're charging between like $150 and $200 uh, for these boards. Once you uh, take care of that, uh, next thing I'm gonna do on my machine is remove the back panels. Obviously, if you still had your motherboard in the original, you already would have had to have done this step, but I'm doing it right here. I need to get access to the speaker area, the speaker amp, as well as the main board here in the, uh, in the machine. So I'm gonna take this off right here, and I'll do the same thing with the uh, lower control panel. I'm gonna take out the four screws. Again, just take care because when you take out these screws, the board could simply, you know, fall over. And you don't want to scratch or dent anything. At least I don't want to do that. So just take your time. And the uh, good thing about the arcade is everything is really easy to get to. Uh, everything is screwed together and unscrews very easily. Um, there's no chance of stripping anything. So they use uh, metal uh, locks on the other side for the screws. You're not going right into the wood for the most part. So screwing and unscrewing the uh, machine is never a bad thing on the arcade. So once I get the last screw out, we can take out this panel. Now I have a lot of cables coming out of here, one's for HDMI, one's for power, one's for the power for the ultimate control panel. So this will get a little bit more clean once we're done. 
but we'll just take this off right here and get the wires out of the way. Again, we'll just take our back panel and put it somewhere safe and secure where we know it's not gonna be scratched or damaged. Next thing I'm gonna do is disconnect. I have the mystery team encoder board. I'm just disconnecting the USB-A and USB-C cable off of that. And next thing I'm gonna do is remove the cables from the back of the iArcade main board. So we have to take off the screen and speaker connector, which is a 25 pin connector, the backlight connector off the back, and of course, uh, power has to come off. And then we can simply remove the board out of the way. And again, take care when holding this. Uh, make sure you have uh, you touch something metal beforehand just to make sure there's no static electricity. Can't stress that enough. Now, once that's done, the next thing we have to take here uh, off is the uh, the backlight for the monitor. This little cable right here, it just pulls right off. Not a big deal. It's very easy to come out. And then we're gonna move the cables for the speaker and the screen. Uh, basically, just gonna press two little pins on each side of the connector, gently pulling it straight down, and it should unlock and come right out. Now there is some metal tape, most likely. Just move that metal tape out of the way to give the connectors room to move and just wiggle it right out and the connector should pop out very easy, just like this. And that is your 25 pin to screen connector and the backlight connector. And you can see the metal pins are exposed. That's facing towards you away from the screen. The metal pins should be facing away from the screen towards you. Just remember that before we go to put in our new connector. Next thing we're going to do is uh, take out the uh, cable here for the speakers. The uh, GRS uh, iRcade uh, switcher with the Viper, we have our own amplifier in here. Uh, a lot of people have said that their amplifier had gone bad and they're trying to source a new one. Well, now we include one in our kit already. So just again, get this metal tape out of the way. And you can pull this cable out of the way, which was for your amplifier and the backlight to the screen. This won't be needed anymore. You can just put that aside or toss it, whatever you want to do. Now, the next thing we gonna do, like I said, we're gonna have our own amplifier. So these speakers, uh, my amplifier works, but a lot of people don't. We're just gonna just uh, press the connector and they'll come right off of the amplifier. There's our one cable, and we'll do the same thing to the other. Again, if your amp works, uh, that's great, but we are gonna be bypassing it with our kit, so it still has to be disconnected regardless. You can leave that in here or take it out. I'm gonna decide to leave mine in. And moving the last little cable that was for the uh, team encoder board. So the next thing we're gonna do now is take our motherboard here, and if this plate is still on, which I had mine still on, that will need to be removed. Now, if you still had yours in the original case that came with the iArcade, you'd have to remove this to properly and easily get this out of the, uh, the wooden enclosure. But I had mine back on, so I'm just gonna take that off right here. It is not needed. Again, before you do this, touch something metal just to make sure you are static free or have a static wristband on just to make sure nothing zaps any of these little chips. So just take out two screws and the plate comes right off. Now you can see right here, I still have these feet. Um, these were probably on yours as well. Uh, we have to take that off as well because we're gonna be mounting it directly into the case. Now, the case I have right here is a 3D printed case. Um, it is not the final case. So most likely, we are gonna be using a, a plexiglass uh, of some kind, uh, enclosure. But for right now, this is what I'm using. So to do this, um, we have to take all these connectors off. And again, it's easy to do. Just take out these screws and take off the little feet. So we have now the main board and we have the team encoder board. If you do have that on your machine, you're gonna have to take it off. It just slides off just to get that last screw. Now, if you didn't but purchase a team encoder board, that's okay. We included with our ultimate control panel, a USB uh, adapter. So you can either use our adapter or again, the team encoder board is just fine as well. Now we have just the bare board here. And we're gonna be installing this bare board. And you see that's the 25 pin for the uh, video out. 
Make sure that goes the exact 180 degree away from the GPO cables coming out of the front of my box. So the uh, 25 pin goes to the back here. You see that little open hole on the right of the front. That's where USB headers uh, should be. And all you're gonna do here is line up the holes. And when you have all the holes lined up, we include screws uh, in the kit. There'll be uh, four self-tapping screws, a uh, flat top. And we're just gonna basically line up the holes. And we're happy where they are, we'll start screwing this in. Now what I generally do is I put one screw in, but I don't tighten it down all the way. I put in all four screws a little bit, but not all the way down, just to make sure everything is lined up and, and centered. And then once all four screws are in, then I will go around again and just tighten them down again. Um, it should be finger tight. Don't over tighten it. Um, whether in a 3D printed case, a regular plastic case, wood, anything, there's no need to over tighten it. Just hand tight, just enough to where you feel the resistance and you can stop. You don't want to take a chance of uh, ruining the, the posts or even potentially cracking the PCB. It's possible. So just hand tight, just till you feel some resistance, and it's good. Now, it does look like there's a lot of cables here, but remember, we need to make this compatible with not only the original iArcade, but also the gold unit. So this machine device is compatible with both. It's one kit that can be installed in either one of the two uh, machines. So once we have all our four screws in, we're just gonna go one more time around, make sure everything's tight, but not over tight. And that's it. We have that all secured. Move some of these cables out of the way. Now you can see right here, the 25 pin is facing towards the back where the volume uh, control is and the controls for the display if you need to use those. That's which we face in the five red buttons on the back and the pot for the speaker volume. So we're gonna move these cables out of the way. You can see right here, here is the new, uh, we call it GPIO, general input output pins. Uh, we're gonna connect that to the uh, I arcade board. Now there are keys on it. They're very tiny keys, so it's still possible to put it in backwards. So look really hard. Make sure you see where the keys are on the cable and where the key is in the connector, and put it in that way. Because again, you can put it in backwards, and if you do, the buttons will do all kinds of weird things. It won't break anything. This won't work right. Next thing we're going to connect here is the HDMI. So we don't use the 25 pin because that is an LVDS uh, out. We actually need to take HDMI out. So this cable will connect to the HDMI out on the back of the iArcade main board. And just put it in and route the cable how you feel is best. There's plenty of room in the bottom of the unit, so I'm just sliding some extra cable down towards the bottom. And there's plenty of room to get the connector in with this thing screwed into the, the, the case. Next thing we're gonna do is connect the power. Again, this power connector will go in no problem to the connector with the space available. Just angle it 45 degrees and it should go right in. Next thing we're gonna do, now this was a problem I actually had, my team design this for our connector and not the mystery encoder and that's that was a mistake on our part i've already talked to my team so when you put this back in place you can see that the 3d printed case it's there's first of all no space to put a connector in for the usb-c or usb-a but the cable we included was not even long enough so you see here i had to cut that section out and i had to get a longer usb-c to usb-a to go into the uh, team encoder board to give usb availability to the the board and to have access to load more games and so forth. So this will be fixed in the uh, plexiglass version and we'll have the proper cables to go to the team encoder. It was just an oversight from my team. They were using the cable that we supplied and they never tested the team encoder board. So it's not a big deal. I simply cut it out here using my Dremel tool. You can see the 
team encoder USB-C goes in, and a really long USB cable is all I had available to make that connection. So it was a small oversight, but it will be fixed by the time we release the, uh, the product. So once that's all done, uh, that's pretty much it. We're just gonna put the top back on and we're gonna route the cables for the left and right speaker, the uh, display, the backlight, uh, all has to come out of here. And you can see I also have a white cable there. That white cable here, right here, is for the micro USB. They didn't include that in the kit, and I told my team we should include that, so hopefully that will, will be in there. Um, if you wanna add games to the Viper, we do have a 32 gigabyte of onboard storage, which you can access over uh, Wi-Fi. But um, I still feel we should have access to the micro SD card slot because maybe you want to load Arcade or Batacera uh, or another OS that comes out in the future and you shouldn't have to take the whole thing apart and the, the Viper is buried at the bottom. So it's better to have access to the micro SD card slot. You can see I'm routing the, that's the uh, GP, I'm sorry, that's the uh, dual switch, the Viper Arcade switch there on the left. And then uh, this cable right here is for the gold unit, which I'm not installing in today. This is going in the legacy unit. And then we simply have the speaker out and the uh, display out coming out of the top. And just take your time, make sure none of the wires are being bound, nothing's getting pinched. And just press down in place. And when it's all lined up, we're just gonna put in the four screws. Again, just take your time here. There's plenty of room in the box. If something's hitting, cable, just move a cable out of the way and just press everything in place and put in our four screws. Just a couple of turns again. Hand tight is fine. Uh, the box is not going anywhere. The lid is really just there to kind of keep everything contained. It's not really had any more function other than just trying to keep it looking as neat as possible. I know it kind of looks like a wire mess, a rat's nest, but unfortunately when you're switching between two separate pieces of hardware and supporting two different types of machines, there's gonna be a lot of cables and a lot of connectors. And uh, we tried to do our best to try and make it as simple as possible. But this was actually a much larger undertaking. You know, when you think of the concept, uh, it seems very simple in your brain, but when you're actually designing and making it, um, it becomes a lot more complicated uh, and a lot of things that um, you didn't realize needed to be cables or connectors that have to be. Okay, so that's it. So right now, um, we have all our cables that we need exposed. We have our GPO cables right here, micro SD card slot, display, audio, and the team encoder board. So this is gonna go in this way. So you can see here's the back of the unit. Uh, you see the five red buttons there that are used for um, the display. There is the micro USB connector I'm pushing to have us include. Um, we have our video to the monitor. And uh, that's really it. So we're going to place this gently inside the back of the unit. I'm going to make sure I don't crush any cables. So here is the back of the unit. You can see this is going to take up the majority of room back here, but that's okay. Because once you put this in, you're not going to be doing it anymore. So it's just going to lift this up and uh, make sure the cables for the GPOs go in the front. Put this in place. Again, the five red buttons should be facing the back and that's for the display. You should never have to touch them. And there's a large pot there for the amplifier. Now I gotta say, we really pump out the volume in this thing. So you might actually wanna turn that pot down a little bit because it might be too, too loud even not by IR arcade standards. But it does fit in here, nice and neat. Um, it really won't shift around too, too much or at all. Now here is the backlight uh, connector. Um, you're going to press it in over here. Again, it is keyed. Just make sure it goes in the right way. It looks like it's hard to reach, but once you get your connector over there, it goes right in fairly easily. I would say don't wear a hat because your hat's going to keep hitting the, <laughs> hitting the top of the IRK, which mine kept hitting right here. And just put your hand back there and press that connector in place. And it should go all the way in easy. If it, there's any resistance, either you're not lined up or you have the connector backwards. And that's it. Just double check and make sure it's in all the way. And it is. That part's done. Next thing we're going to do here is for the display. Remember, the metal pins should be facing you towards the back of the unit, not towards the screen. And we're just going to line this up right here. Again, 
Uh, it should go in fairly easy, and you have two little clicks. Those are the two little um, uh, metal clips that lock it into place. Just slide that in gently. And again, if you're not getting it right, just take your time. You don't want to break this connector. Once you have it lined up, it should slide right in, and you hear a little click, click, as the two little pins engage. And then for a little extra strain relief, um, I did, was able to salvage the tape. It's very good uh, metal tape they used. Just gonna pull this little ca this cable to the back of the unit and cover it with a piece of aluminum tape just for strain relief. Just like that. And that was probably the hardest part of the whole thing. Now these two cables here, this is for the uh, du dual switch for the Viper and IRK. That has to go towards the front of the unit. I'm gonna pull that through. That's for the secondary switch on the right-hand side that will now illuminate and allow you to switch the Viper or the IRK's main board. That is a micro USB uh, connector there as well for SD cards. This cable here would be used for the gold unit to connect to the main motherboard. But since it's not going in a gold unit, I'm just going to push this out of the way. It's not needed. Now, you can completely remove it entirely. I mean, if you don't have a gold unit, you can just take that cable off. I, I chose not to. Next thing I'm going to do is connect these speakers here for your left and right speaker. Again, we have our own amplifier built in, which, again, I think is louder <laughs> quite a bit than the stock unit. So if you really wanted something loud, this is going to be it. You might actually want to turn that uh, knob down in the back a little bit. But we're just going to pull it through here and just connect the left and right speakers. It'll clip right on and connect. There's one. And there's two. And again, just moving the wires out of the way. Um, there's another piece of aluminum tape right there. You could tape it down a little bit. But just get the wires out of the way so they don't get pinched when you close the unit up. I probably should have used a little piece of uh, a twist tie or something, but I didn't do that. Next thing we have here is the power for the everything, for the Viper, for the arcade display. That's actually right here in the front. And I know it looks a little inconvenient, but you can feel exactly where it is. There's room and just go in at a 45 degree angle and that connector will go right in. You probably could have put it in beforehand, but I didn't. But I'm putting it in now. And that's it. So that would supply power to everything, the amplifier, the speakers. It does not supply power to the ultimate control panel. That still does require its own uh, power supply, which we included with the unit. Now that cable there is for the team encoder. If you want to you know, load ROMs on the original board, our power connector, and that is the power pack for the ultimate control panel. So really just two power packs. Now here's the front of the unit. Uh, that's the power for the ultimate control panel. That writes the USB-A for the ultimate control panel USB ports. That's for the mode switcher. And of course, the ultimate control panel connectors for all the controllers. So we're going back to our control panel right here. Again, we can see that's the new, gonna be functional now for switching the modes. That's gonna go on last. That's the shortest cable, so that goes on last. So the first thing I'm gonna install over here is the, uh, make sure you know, the power, which is right there. That supplies power to the controllers and USB hub. So I'm going to plug that in first. That supplies all power to the USB hub for the unit. So you can plug in like Sindan and light guns. And that's the USB connector that'll make the two functional USB ports and the hub in the back of this device all functional to both the Viper as well as the iArcade uh, main unit. There's my cable for the connector. That goes into our switcher board, so it's available to both units. And then I'm gonna plug in power. Next, we're gonna uh, connect the GPIO pins. So once again, this is keyed, and the connector is so small, it is entirely possible to put it in backwards. So really look and see where the key are, the nubs are, as well as the holes. Take your time and then push it in place. Make sure you're going down as straight as possible. Once that's done, the last thing we need to do is just get the control panel a little bit closer and then connect our Viper slash IRCade CPU 
switcher, which is our secondary dual button there on the right hand side. So that'll finally come to life. And then we're going to push this back in place. Just make sure you tilt it down first so the power cable and the uh, USB cable go in first. Tilt it down, make sure nothing's getting pinched, and it should go right into place. And lastly, just make sure you put your plexiglass back in place, and then you can start putting the screws back together. That's it for the installation. Okay, we can see right now we have the IR arcade in the uh, right, I'm sorry, the left button over here, which brings up the Viper. We can't control the volume. Here, I'm going to bring up the volume. It gets quite loud! Too loud! So I'm going to bring the volume down a little bit. It really gets loud. Um, of course, we have our joystick here, which now controls different functions of the games, different emulators. Now this is running the Viper Batacera, which is version uh, 3.8, which supports Sindin light guns. And of course you can plug in other things like the GRS uh, Flight Yoke uh, for games like Star Wars. You can plug in the Akari Warriors a stick to play games like Akari Warriors. Of course we already have the trackball built in and the spinners built in, uh, which are available to you as well. Uh, the two USB ports on the front were also accessible for other future, you know, gaming accessories. You can plug it in, uh, you know, a keyboard if you need to do that for some reason. And uh, now uh, I think it's Wreck-It Ralph. Let me bring the vibe up a little bit here. So there, I'll fix a Felix. Wreck-It Ralph, fix a Felix. So if you were to click on that right there, you know, that should launch the game. And uh, bring up the volume again. Um, I, I've talked to my team though. The speakers do get extremely loud, which is fine, but there's a little bit of hiss in here, and I would like to see if they can get rid of that hissing. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's like very high-pitched uh, noise. Uh, I know the arcade had a little bit of that as well, but if we can try and clear that up, I'd be a little more happy with it. So right now it's loading uh, Commodore 64 uh, Fix-It Felix Jr. We have to wait for it to load because it, it is emulating the uh, floppy drive as well. We can see it down here. Oh, there we go. He's going to wreck it! Okay, the game's loaded up here. I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit. joystick mode because it's a four-way joystick game so let's go with the gate switcher right there Running on the Viper, if you want to go over to the IR arcade, you'd press your other button over here, your right button, and I'll switch you over to the IR arcade. Now, right now, the screen is coming up as it's supposed to, which is, which is good, but there are issues. The uh, IR arcade uh, HDMI port on the back of the unit, they didn't really implement HDMI properly, so it didn't work right now, which is awesome. But I'm gonna go back to the Viper. 
And you can see we still have the game running over here. I'm going to go back to the iArcade. And this is what happens sometimes. So you can see everything's still here, but it truncated or compressed the screen. If this does happen, you have to simply restart your iArcade. Unfortunately, um, there's no way around that. I even talked to the team and Mystery Encoder and a few other people, and they all said the same thing. They don't know what iArcade did with their external uh, HDMI, but if you simply reboot it, it will come up okay. And unfortunately, that's something we are not able to resolve. If anyone has a way to resolve it, I'm more happy to hear you guys about it. But right now, we do not have a way to do that, and, and Zhang and the team over at iArcade are gone, and they're not answering any questions about it, so there's nothing we can do on that. So I'm just going to restart the machine. And you can see it's coming up the proper ratio. So you can see it's coming back up right now, and it is, it is fixed. So... I'm not quite sure what they're doing with HDMI, but other people have already expressed this issue with the IRK's external HDMI port. So unfortunately, nothing we could do. So I can go back to the Viper over here. Oh, I died. I died. But hit the key, you go, go back into your game. That's no problem. And then if you want to go back to the IRK, you have a 50-50 chance. It's coming up perfectly fine this time. If I go back to Viper, I'm here. See, my screen is fine. But I go back. The screen is truncated. Again, you can play the game like this. Uh, it's, a, it's more of a 4.3 aspect ratio, I suppose. Uh, not really. It's, it's more compressed. But you can still play the game. But if you want to have it properly, you're going to have to shut it down, unfortunately, and, and turn it back on. But the beautiful thing is, you can just play the same games here on your Viper side. Um, let me lower the volume here a little bit again. Okay, so you can see right here, we are booted up right now in the iArcade mode. Of course, the control panel works here. Sound works. It gets quite loud. And we have two USB ports in the front. You know, if you wanted to, you could sit down in your chair, take a USB gamepad, connect to either one of the ports, doesn't really matter. But you see here the controller. Now it takes over the functions. And of course, you can also plug in, you know, send in light guns or the GRS send in target pro. Uh, and of course, as long as the game supports it, you can plug in the GRS uh, flight yoke, the uh, GRS Akari Warriors super joystick. Of course, you have the trackball and spinners. Everything works. In here, now you can see this here is the four-way and the eight-way mode button. So I want to go into a game here. Let's just pick any game; it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, let's just pick Arkanoid for the heck of it. So I'm gonna go in, start that game. Now this particular game is loaded with the Mystery Encoder board. So we'll put a coin in, start the game. And this would support a joystick or the rotary or trackball because obviously it is a spinner game. So you can see right here I can use a spinner or I can use a trackball or I could use a joystick. So you have all kinds of options. Now even though this game is playing right now and you're an active game in the IR arcade, you can press this over here now. We have two two-way buttons here. This one here, you press the left button and it will switch over to the Viper. Now, the stock Viper build is Batisara version 3.8. And 3.8 also supports Sindin light guns. It supports the GRS Sindin Target Pro. It also supports game pads. Let's plug a game pad in over here. Again, it doesn't matter what port you plug into. It gets recognized. Of course, then you can use this controller as well. But you can still use the built-in controllers, of course. The good thing about the, uh, the GRS Ultimate Control Panel, yes, there are two USB ports here. But we also have two additional ports on the inside here. And then once you add the GRS Viper switcher, you have uh, another SBC, uh, which has 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, or you can use a micro SD card slot. You can run Batisara, or I actually have a little SD card over here. And this little SD card is running Arcade. Arcade is another uh, operating system you can load on the Viper. It gives you a little bit better performance because they really optimized it for the RK3566 chipset. But that's something else you can do. I'll do another video on that later on down the road. Um, but again, we have our gate switches here. And again, when it's plugged into the Viper or the Arcade with Battisero Arcade, uh, if the game supports it and it's configured, it'll automatically set it between Pac-Man using a four-way gate or a game that needs an eight-way gate, like the Forgotten World, something along those lines. And again, your trackballs and all these controllers are still all 
functional in here. Now, right now, you can see I have uh, some, let's see what we have. I don't know if I have installed in here right now. Okay, we have nothing really uh, defaulting in the Mega Drive. I think I put something in here. No. Okay, we have some MAME games. So again, you can load the artwork, uh, all these things you could download after the fact. I haven't done any of that. I just have some games here. And these games right now are all installed in the internal 32 gigabyte uh, onboard storage. We have two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. And you can copy them over Wi-Fi or you could directly connect your Viper to your PC over USB and it would be seen as just a storage device. And you can literally just copy the games right over onto the Viper. Or with the micro SD card slot, you can also load games and tell to get, get it from, from there. But uh, again, the gate switches would work just the same right now in manual mode or in automatic mode. If I wanted to pull up a game, let's say, let's pull up something here. Uh, I really want to try here. How about some Mortal Kombat? I'm not very good at it. I'm not good at any fighting games, but I'm going to load Mortal Kombat. We do have six buttons here on the iArcade uh, and also on the GRS uh, Ultimate Control Panel. Here is Mortal Kombat. And again, this is uh, an NES pad, but if you had a pad with uh, six buttons on there, I guess technically you do, you can map them up here. But you can use either one of these controllers, either these or these, or whatever controller you have. So let's put a coin in. And we'll start the one player game. I generally pick Scorpion myself. Scorpion. We can try a four-way player game. We'll set the control here to four-way.
couple of quirks. Uh, the HDMI is one. You go from the Viper over to the iArcade and you turn it on. Again, it'll be fine, but that's it's a little annoying, but unfortunately there's nothing we could do about, uh, about that. Um, right now, when you're turning on the machine, um, my team has some steps. We have to hold down the left button as you're powering it on. That is supplying power to the machine. And I told my team, we need to fix that. We need to make it simply the power button does everything. Uh, if you guys have to physically turn power off on the back uh, of your machine to initialize everything, I'm not, I'm not too happy about that. So I've already expressed that to my team. Again, I've already got this literally uh, Wednesday. So one day ago, uh, I received this myself. And um, I'm kicking old school. I did talk about this a little bit. But there's a video with the install and everything here. And I'm overall happy with the progress and the, and the layout and the way it's working, but there are a couple things I want to have addressed before we start taking pre-orders on this and before we start selling it. Uh, again, the hissing, if we can fix that, they'd be kind of great. It's a high-pitched hissing. That does happen a lot of times with high amplified speakers. I mean, these things get super loud, but if there's something we could do to filter that out, it'd be, be kind of great. Um, and I'm also not happy with the way that um, you have to hold this down as you're supplying power to the machine to make it work. I think my team should be able to resolve that, and I want to have them do that before we uh, release this. 60 is turning back on, and the screen is proper. So every time you restart the iArcade, it will always come up properly, but when you're switching between the two, it's a 50-50 chance of it not coming up correctly. But that's it for this video. So the installation is not the simplest thing, but it's also not the most complicated. It's a few steps. As long as you follow the steps, everything should go perfectly fine. Um, and again, this will make your iArcade longevity a lot better because there's no new games being released for the iArcade overall. There are some uh, indie developers still doing it, but there's not a lot. But if you want to be able to use the trackball and the spinners and other features and have more advanced uh, emulation on other systems, the Viper board is the way to go, and you can get that with the GRS Ultimate Control Panel and the GRS uh, IRK Switcher. Uh, I do want my team to kind of address a couple of things and uh, open pre-orders and be able to ship them out. But I do want this thing, this one button here turning everything on. To have to hold this button down as you're supplying power to the machine, I think is not, not the right way to go, and it's not something I want for myself, so I wouldn't want that for you guys. But in any case, that's it for this video. I did hope you liked it. Um, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It uh, really helps me out with YouTube algorithms. If you didn't like it, a thumbs down is okay, but leave a comment down below what you didn't like about it. And then, uh, again, I still would appreciate uh, a thumbs up or thumbs down. And if you're not currently a subscriber, I would appreciate a sub. 
Uh, we, I do a lot of good things like this with the communities, with our arcade and many other machines. Uh, we have lots of new hardware still coming out this year. And if you want to know what's coming out, the best way is to be subscribed to my channel to see what's up, coming up next. But regardless, I do appreciate your time uh, you just spent with me watching my video. Uh, but just take a minute to uh, reach out to one of your friends and family. Let them know you love them. Because you know what? As fun as all this stuff is, and it is fun, it's entertaining, it's great. I love modifying these machines. But not the case presence of your family and friends. And nothing is promised, especially tomorrow. So take one moment today. Tell them you love them. But in between those times, play some Fix It Felix Jr. Crank up the volume. And game on. for that arcade experience at home, if you don't have the space for a full-size arcade in your house or endless funds, then you need the GRS Build-A-Gate. It's arcade quality without the arcade price from someone you can trust. The GRS Build-A-Gate is very simple, easy to assemble, one six scale arcade computer you can build yourself. You can buy interchangeable controllers for every gaming option you need to play the games the way they're meant to be played. You can also design your own artwork or purchase artwork separately to make your GRS Build-A-Gate look like the machine of your dreams. The GRS build gate is also the only home system STEM certified. Come see what all the YouTube creators are raving about. GRS build a -Cade. Game on. Sit, Blue Blue, sit. Good dog.